Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Trouble B. Remember a while back we had a video with Daniel Solis kind of put the whole Super Dwarf Keeping community into a little bit of a tizzy? Yes, I said tizzy. Well, he went to the Super Dwarf Islands, gathered information, and he came back to share with us his findings and an update on his hypothesis. You're watching Triple B TV. You had a hypothesis that... Well, people got mad because we were calling it hypothesis. I think they wanted us to call it theory. No, it was the other way around. We were calling it theory and they wanted us to call it hypothesis. Oh, okay. Well, well, first of all, to clear it up, we're, I'm not in any way, shape, or form a biologist, a scientific, uh, no scientific background whatsoever. I'm a part of the industry, a part of the hobby, and uh, just with the passion but in you know i don't have any credentials when it comes to you know we're in the same boat there. right <laughs> <laughs> so you went so yeah so i made it there man been uh, working on that for seven years uh, it, it's almost surreal uh it's a goal of mine uh and and he, i made it happen yeah for sure let's kind of recap on the what the hypothesis was that potentially that there was no locality of a super dwarf yeah. and that they were all traveling across the different islands, crossing yes. water, breeding with each other, and that the variability that we saw in the pattern was potentially just, just that, a variability within the single species of, of super dwarf. Exactly, which, which I think it started like that, but now it became a locale. So I was, I was wrong to a certain state, a uh, certain level, or, uh, you know, based on the info that we had, I came to the conclusion that that was the case, that there is variation even with the Kalatoa. And it is true, but not at random. So uh, the animals are thriving in very specific environments and not, not in the entire island. There's places that nothing is growing and nothing thrives. So, f for example, all right, I got there. I went looking for them uh, for almost a week, didn't find any. And I'll tell you why. Um, all these years, uh, well, I've been telling people they're different, different subspecies, different name. We're hybridizing them to mainlands, basically, and we didn't know that in the in the industry. We didn't we didn't think of it, and I'm telling them we gotta start keeping them slightly different because it's a different species. But yet, in my head, I'm still thinking of them as mainland, and thinking that they do the same thing because all these years it's been embedded in me. So I went out there looking for mainlands and I didn't find any, you know? I went out there thinking that they will be up in the trees trying to catch birds or near the streams above because that's usually where I find mainlands in Java, Borneo or uh, any of the other islands. So I get there, I'm doing that and fail, fail every night, every day. I couldn't find them until uh, just digging around, we saw a track and the track le led to a little hole in um, underground and it was funny because we knew it was a snake uh, me and my friend uh, the tag along with me and we ended up in a cave system and we found them simple as that then we realized that they're not climbing trees we realized that since there's no water sitting above the island they're going underground to find it fresh water and the bats that live there are the primarily source of food totally different than what I, we used to see uh, mainlands do that will go up in the trees up in the houses in the banks of the rivers where I found them before this time it didn't work there. they are acting differently just just that alone um, and yeah we found them right um, again it wasn't that easy first of all this was on the on, on Kalatoa. Kalatoa, Kalatoa. so first of all before I got there which it was a whole uh, travel thing um, it took me five days in transit to get there, okay? Um, so I went through the Sulawesi side, from Jakarta to Sulawesi to Salayer. From Salayer, a 25-hour boat ride to Kalatoa. So it, it, it was a long way before I got there. I'm the first tourist they see there in the past 10 years generations of kids haven't seen anybody else go to that island i was the first one and it's crazy because they have never seen somebody so tall or or my nose they were keep pointing at my nose that it was big and why do i have a mustache they don't and why am i so big and it was crazy 
Did somebody, um, did somebody try to challenge you physically? They did, and that's another story. Wait, oh. like I said, man, there's so many things that, that, that happened in that trip, right? So first of all, uh, I went on a cargo boat, not in a ferry like most people think. It was a cargo boat that there was no food for uh, travelers because they don't take people, only the crew. And there is no bathroom. Uh, you got to kind of hang over the rails if you want to go. But before I go to my trips, I do reduce the food intake over periods of time, and I do fast um, before I go to any other trips. So reduces the, 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 my metabolism, I think. And um, so I didn't have to use the bathroom so often, but it's, it's horrible. This is, these cargo boats are not set up for passengers. So I was able to get on one. Uh, it took us a day to find one. We got to pay. And I think everything was fine, but you got to explain to these people why you're trying to go there. They don't get it. They don't see any tourists at all. There's no records of any tourists there. Why are you going there? What's your business there? We didn't know where we were going to go stay. They don't have electricity. They don't have cell phones. And the thing is, so we're there trying to figure it out. Okay, so what are, what are we going to do? Are we going to stay out in the field? Or are we going to try to rent a house? Or what are we going to do? We were prepared to stay out in the field, which is fine. We have water. We were thinking, uh, okay, if we had to fish, we're going to fish, or do whatever we have to do. The captain of the boat goes, you guys don't know where, you, where you're going, right? And we're like, yeah, we, we really don't. He goes, okay. And um, we got there, and they go, you wait here in a little village, waiting to talk to somebody, and they go, okay, we find a uh, place, you're going to stay with us. And we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, you know, we're not going to say no. So we went there. We stayed with, the, with one of the villagers, and we're kind of explaining them that, that we're photographers. We want to go see what's going on uh, with retics, and they didn't get it at all, but they didn't oppose to it. People in Calato are super cool. They offer me food. They offer me a place to stay, um, and they facilitated us to go out in the field. And uh, Okay, so we got there. We're telling them now, more or less, showing them pictures of what we do. And then, hey, this is what we do. We want to take photos. We want to study a little bit of what's going on here. They agree. We went exploring. And, um, man, we came back, and they're like, oh, do you find anything? And we're like, no, sorry. <laughs> so little by little, they figured out that we were cool people. They start telling us that they've seen them there, you know, and we couldn't find them again. We ended up going through this cave system and we found it like four days later after we arrived. It was exciting. It's exciting. I was able to photograph them. I was able to see the whole habitat, see where they are. It worked out perfect. Um, start seeing uh, what I thought, you know, the randomness. It wasn't the case. In the area that we found them at first, they all look similar. Similar. Uh, no variation in the pattern. It almost seems that they're families. And then we realize that they're staying within that range. And that range is probably, I don't know, it's... it's Smaller than this building? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. By far. It's, it's the range. It's, it's only a, a cave entrance that has an underwater, uh, under cave water system of fresh water. They're not going out exploring. They have the food source right there. It's either mice or bats. It's like a microclimate or Mic micro uh, micro uh, locality. Yes. And then I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, they do look like what we have at home. So, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're, you know. So when we went to another location about three hours away and um, found another population that looked slightly different. And then I realized I know what's going on, even though they're in the same island. Prime environment, it's keeping them locked in. And there is a slight difference between those families. It's very slight, but there is. And also, I realized that I was saying, uh, oh, yeah, they, they swim. I've seen them swim. I've seen reticulated python swim. Malayo python reticulatus, um, not jampianus. It's a different species. He acts differently. So. Uh, when when I went there saying uh, that, uh, oh, yeah, they're probably crossing, quite possibly, not likely. Even though the when it's low tide, it's, it's really not that far. 
but they're not moving from where they are. They're they, found their, they found a happy place. So they don't need any reason exactly. to venture out in exactly. danger. So, so what that did, I think, it's um, created smaller pockets of localities. Um, so I was on the northern west western side of the island in Kalatoa. And I think that's where the most of the ones we have are coming from because it's the easiest way, um, it's the, the closest way to the port. And I think people just go there really quick in the cave system that's in that coastline, uh, trap whatever they can and then leave or whatever. They're not going inland, going up or around the island looking for more. So that's why the ones that I found there are the most, um, <clears throat> uh, what we have here. Uh, but we went to another part of the island and then we start seeing a little bit of changes in pattern, you know, mostly in pattern. And that happened in, in Carompa too. Then I made it to Carompa and that's when I had an issue with one of the locals. But man, that's an entire new, new story and it takes us long. At the end of the day, the guy was drunk. They do a, a, a coconut uh, alcoholic drink there. Very powerful, but super soft. Like you drink it, and it feels like the the coconut water we get in a can. So that's how it tastes. But man, it gets you um, drunk. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> so this guy is drunk, and then it's he, you know, he saw me. Oh yeah, there's a there's a tourist in the islands. So he went out and looking for the tourist, right? Uh, and I think he means well, but he got drunk, and by the time he got to us, he was drunk, and. He ended up being the hunter of the island, so that the, all the people that get uh, carompas in, in that we used to get from, and in, in, in Europe, I know the guy who, who's collecting, and he's not a cool guy, and, and we had a big issue with him, by the way. <laughs> but it's only him, and he's the boss of the island, right? And it's a little dude this big, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so, you know, m maybe you shouldn't put that, but <laughs> but the the thing is. He's drunk, and, and we didn't know it was him, the hunter. And he goes, yeah, I, I catch retics. I'm the hunter here. I'm, I'm the big guy, you know. I'm like, yeah, me too. Here, here's some pictures. And he's getting drunk and drunk, and he pulls out a bag of carompas. And then I realized I connected all the dogs. Okay, you're the guy, you know, who was exporting all this and collecting everything. And uh, he told me I was strong and tried to pick me up, and I kind of pushed him away, and he got mad. And then he said he wanted to kill me. <laughs> Again, it went south pretty quick, but at the end of the day, I was able to run out. I actually have a video of us running from the island and catching a little boat from a guy and telling us to get us out of there. And, and we took off. We didn't see the guy again, but I was there for two days prior to that. So I was able to find uh, Alcarompa in the wild and the first one to photograph it. And again, I saw, I saw differences in Carompa when he's collecting them from an area that's away from the village. And I actually found one at the village and it looks different yeah it's more so, so, so Kalatoa and Karampa both have showed that there are micro localities yes yes very small very small locations and it's prime the snakes don't move and here I was thinking that that it was almost like, the opposite the, that they're, going the, all they're over the place, moving yeah. all over the place they're retics they're, they move and cover ground which they do mainlands right but not these subspecies and to make it very clear, and I think it's something very important that I have to say, because I realized that in the, a little too late, super dwarf and mainland retics are different species. And I think there's gonna be further reclassification. What that means is all these years we've been hybridizing it. Not something that I realized just now. I, I had an idea of what was going on seven years ago, but the industry had never used that word and we were just fine and i think it matters because quite possibly the u.s has the biggest populations of super dwarf uh, be bigger than the wild so we might have a responsibility to keep them pure pure for the species so so um i think it's very important to to make it clear to the people who are looking into super dwarf when we say it has 75 percent super dwarf or it's 50 percent that means they're hybrids. Uh, I produced them. I produced them up to last year. I think I produced my last clutch. But I opted out from hybridizing it from this point on because I see how rare they are in the wild and how rare they're going to become here, especially because importation is close. So to get that out of the way, 
Um, mainlands are, the scientific name is Malayo Python Reticulatus Reticulatus. Um, super dwarf are grouped together uh, with Jampia, uh, Kayuwari, uh, Maru, Kalatoa, Karompa, and Bonerate under Malayo Python Reticulatus Jampianus. And I think they're going to separate that pretty soon, especially after showing some of the after showing that we are able to get to those islands. So hopefully people who are, you know, who have the credentials can take over from here and realize that there's a little, and it will become a new species, <laughs> I hope. It will, it's obvious. It physically, I mean, Jampias are bigger, just, just that alone. And it can get cryptic where DNA work should be done. Anyways, so that means that we quite possibly have one of the rarest pythons in the world endemic to only those particular islands and we're here hybridizing it just because uh, the industry has started to like it and it's becoming uh, appealing money-wise so <clears throat> um, you know it's something important to know so uh, I, I do have pures and, and I do sell them so every time I, now I try to tell people you know, if, if you want to learn, let's start with this. There are different species. You have to start treating them differently. Um, and I try to explain them as much as I can. Cool, man. Cool. Good, good, good <laughs> job. Well, I've, I'm glad you came by and stopped the update. I know a lot of people are looking forward to hearing what it was you had found yeah. while you're out there. So um. Yeah, yeah, I, a lot of people ask. And um, I know I did a few things wrong. Uh, I get but clarifying that I'm not... You know, uh, you're just doing this because you, you love yeah, it. Yeah, just for the love of the yeah. hobby. I mean, I'm part of the industry, and and, and I, I wanted to push it as far as I could. If since I was so passionate about it, I was like, let's let's put something together and and, and bring some light to it. Uh, so yeah, what I found was there is a slightly variation within each island, not a random. It's happening within each l location. I saw variation. Each group was very similar to each other, but different. But the family in that group, they all look alike. It's like twins. Um, and then another thing too is, uh, you know, a lot of people shy away from breeding. They have Kalatoas and they have Karompas and they don't want to cross them, but yet they're okay hybridizing them. And uh, to that I say, you're at least breeding the same species together when you when you have a, 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 Karo, a, a Kalatoa and a Karompa. So um, you can still breed those you know, the ideal situation will be breeding them from the same population you get it from, but that's hard to to, to get. Um, but that's less of a concern than hybridizing it to a mainland. So for those people who want to breed them, uh, don't shy away from that. Even if you think they're from different locales, depending on who you get them from, I think that's less of an issue than hybridizing them, you know. Uh, and again, nothing wrong with hybridizing them. Uh, Just depend if, if your intention is to keep things as pure as possible. Then but, you but you know, hybridize. you have to understand what you're doing. You know, if you know for sure that you're hybridizing them and you're okay with that, that's fine. It's your choice. I couldn't say anything because I did it. But if you realize that we might be, we might have one of the rarest pythons in the world in our hands and we're just hybridizing it, I, I think it's going to come back to us a little too late. When, when they reclassify this species to its own species, uh, they're going to separate it from Jampia. So that means there's only three or four little islands that have it. And that is rare. Um, I'm glad that I went. Uh, it was an adventure. We can talk about it for hours. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a few things uh, as far as putting the information out. Hopefully, I can go back again and uh, get more info. Uh, other than that, I do have some pictures on my uh, Instagram page. Uh, I don't know if I should... Yeah, I'll make sure there's a link down there so people can go find your page and, and check yeah. out the pictures from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And then uh, hopefully it made more sense now that I went and because and, and I know a lot of people uh, saw the first video. And they could reach out to me. I mean, it, it, it's hard to explain it because I, even myself I get confused, but I try to help out if I can. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't know what else. That's good. I appreciate it, man. I, right, man. I appreciate the update. We'll yeah, thank you. And then you may have realized we lost the la last camera angle for the second half of the video there, that, that main camera angle. But card filled up, and that was all the images we did for the weekend because we had no more memory on our memory cards at all. But 
Next week, we're gonna bring you back to the Herpeton Talks where Dr. Scott Stahl is gonna give some new techniques on breeding and reproductivity. It's, it's gonna be some good stuff. Until then, you can watch Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, good. Oh, you gotta talk into yeah, the microphone. Yeah, talk to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's yeah, the way it's yeah. gonna work today. I found this gets so, better audio with all the crowds around. Right here? Like yeah. closer or right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, right. Yeah, as long okay. as you hear yourself in your headphones, then it's a good sign. Yeah, I can, I can hear myself a little bit. Yeah. And an update on his hypothesis. You're watching Triple B TV.